Don't ask me when I'll get there. Whenever I get there. Jean Glasscock is a long rider. That's someone who has ridden more than a thousand continuous miles on a single equestrian journey. Jean went one better. He's the only person to have ridden from North to South America. The Texas-born horseman accomplished that feat in the 1980s when he rode his quarter horse cactus 12,000 miles from the Arctic Circle in Canada to the equator in Ecuador. Then, in September 2002, Jean set out from Denver, Colorado to recreate the Overland Westerner's amazing journey, visiting all the contiguous 48 state capitals and meeting every governor. Jean rode over three years and 20,000 miles and is the oldest person known to have made a journey of this magnitude. Jean is currently on a trip from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic in a mule-drawn wagon. I was 76 when, when I started. It wasn't long till I was 77. But I, however, I do have a, a bottle of uh, Pacific Ocean water to put into the Atlantic. I met Jean in February 2011. We were headed in opposite directions on the four-lane highway north of Las Cruces. I spun the truck around in the median, caught up with him, and we became instant friends. It's hard not to be Jean's friend. He has a quick smile, he loves to tell stories, and he loves those animals. He told me about his journey, and I invited him to my place for a few days rest. Of course, I told him I would cook him some green enchiladas, and I think that won him over. Jean showed up a couple days later with his dog, Bug, and the two mules, Kate and Kitty. They stayed for three days, me photographing and videotaping and enjoying some of Jean's favorite stories. Always before, for one reason or another, I had a time pressure on me. And so I couldn't have the full enjoyment of the trip. One of the, the things that when I rode from the Arctic to the equator, the, the media said, uh, how long will it take you to take the trip? I don't know, two or three years. And they inevitably said two years, two years, two years. And uh, then I felt I had to meet their expectations. And it took a lot of the joy out of the ride because I was constantly pushing. I knew what I had to do to make it. And by the way, I made it two days short of two years. And when I rode to all 48 state capitals, I was having an appointment with governors and other dignitaries in every state. And therefore, again, I was under a lot of pressure to meet, to meet deadlines. I wanted to make a trip that I don't have any pressure. Gene was full of stories, and I filled a notebook full of them. His favorite story was the time he was going around to the state capitals, and he got to Austin, Texas. Well, the press was going to meet him at the Hyatt Regency. The plan was for him to ride up in his new buckskin clothes, get off, hand the reins to the doorman, and go inside for a room. Just as he got there, a cavalcade of limos and motorcycles drove up, and a group of men got out and spread around the front entrance, while another man opened the door and out stepped George Bush Sr. Well, he was running for president, and he upstaged Jean and the horses. A few years later, Jean was in Boston to do some historical research, and when he got to the museum, they were rolling out the red carpet. Jean said, hey, that's mighty nice of you to roll out the red carpet for me. And they said, oh no, President Bush is coming in. Well, Jean just laughed and said Bush had upstaged him again. One of the arrangements that Jean and I made while he was at my house was for me to travel one day with him on the wagon. That day in the wagon, listening to the clip-clop of the mule shoes on the pavement, the morning sun warming me, 
and the slow pace of the meals was almost mesmerizing. It gave me great insight into Jean's life and what makes him continue to travel by horsepower. All stress vanishes and you are left to appreciate your senses and reflect on life. You notice little things that are lost while traveling in a car, the chirping of a bird, the mooing of a cow, even a slight breeze through the trees, but especially the hurried sound of a vehicle passing the wagon are all emphasized. All along the road that day, people stopped to take photos and at every pullout, Jean stopped to talk with them and let them pet the mules and the dog and ask about the wagon and his travels. But don't think Jean's roughing it. His wagon is equipped with solar panels. He's got a computer and electricity for his lights. He's got a propane cook stove and his bed and table. He's got room to store his food and other necessities. The underside of the wagon holds several bales of hay and grain, plus an extra tire for emergencies. The wagon is a replica of a sheep herder's wagon. He truly is traveling like a pioneer, but living in the present. Gene also has a Facebook page where he and his friends post pictures and tell what area the country is traveling through. He has a huge following of people, most of them wishing they were traveling with him. The only thing Gene doesn't have is a schedule. He said everyone asked him when he will get to the Atlantic. He just laughs and says, I'll get there when I get there. It's not about the travel. It's all about the people I meet along the way.